بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد so my topic today is logical and sharia proof of khanqa what is khanqa we have been talking about tazkiya khanqa comes from a persian word khana and ga which means a dwelling of a sufi a sufi's residence a sufi is not supposed to go home and sleep He's supposed to be in Khanqa. That's where he's supposed to be. So that's his downtime. When he's at home, he's at downtime. Where does he reside at? Khanqa. This is Khanqa. Khanqa is where, a place where the Sufi is going to be found. So why do we need Khanqas? You see, a man has a physical form and also has a spiritual form. Right? Just like physical, physically we are inflicted with some diseases and illnesses, in the same way we are get uh, our spirit also gets sicknesses our ruh sometimes gets sick for example there is pneumonia there is fever these are some diseases that can easily be treated coughing flu and then some could be more of uh, fateful diseases like cancer and stuff like that so when your body is inflicted with some disease what do you do you go to the doctor's office go to the hospital depending on the type of the disease you have in the same way, we have spiritual diseases like anger, jealousy, right? We get so out of control in anger. We are ready to break our families. And then we realize, what did we do? Then there is jealousy involved, right? We lose so much of our family because we are jealous of them, right? We have love of dunya. We have love of fame. We have Sometimes some of these diseases are so fateful like cancer, like ilhad. Ilhad basically means atheism. People don't want to believe in Allah anymore. Right? Uh, that's a way, like of a cancer to the ruh. So when our ruh is inflicted with diseases, what do we do? Where is those doctor's office for our ruh? That doctor's office for the ruh is the khanqa. This is where the sheikh is going to be a do spiritual doctor and he's going to treat your disease. He's going to ask you the probing questions just like a medical doctor would. Oh, if you were coughing, do you also feel the chest pain? Or if you were also feeling this and that, I'm not a doctor, I don't know. But we care about our body so much. Even this morning, my, you know, my finger was hurting. I was like, should I ask a doctor? You know, I'm so, I'm so particular and so careful if I have a pain in the chest, I should ask a doctor right away. If my finger is hurting, I need to ask. I need to go for an x-ray. Why? Because my body is so dear to me. But what about my ruh? Why do I not care about my ruh? If I have anger problems, why can I not go to a khanka and consult with a spiritual doctor and say, Sheikh, why I have anger? You know, the Sheikh is going to ask you some probing questions. What is it? Why you get angry? And you're going to be like, oh, because this was my right, I deserve this, and somebody else, uh, else took away my right. And then the sheikh is going to tell you, what about qualities like ithar? Ithar means giving what you have for yourself, giving it to others, right? You know Sahaba radiallahu anhu majmai? In Ghazwa Tabuk, they gave up their lives. They didn't take a sip of water. They gave their lives. This is ithar. This is the... More, highest level of ethar that you can sacrifice your life just because you want to save someone else's life. That's ethar. So what happened to that virtue of ethar? The shaykh is try, would try to plant that goodness in your heart that with that ethar, it would calm down your anger. Sometimes your anger would be out of kibar uh, because you think that you have so much pride in you that you want control and some things are getting out of your control and you get angry. Who's going to tell you why your anger is there? Why you have these issues? Somebody has to tell you that. But our problem is we don't understand what Khanqa is and we come to the, in the majalis of the Shaykh and tell them, MashaAllah, my tahajjud is good. MashaAllah, my fajr was beautiful. I did this and did this and did this. Well, if you got, said that to a doctor, that mashallah, my stomach is good, my chest is good, my walking is good, the doctor's going, well, don't waste my time, go somewhere else, I'm seeing patients, right? In the same way, if you come in the khanqa and you tell them all the good things that you have been doing, the sheikh is going to be like, all right, nice meeting you, brother. <laughs> we'll see you again. So khanqa, the purpose of khanqa is that you come here for your spiritual diseases. You come here to get treated. 
So that is a pretty logical answer. Why? What is the importance of Hanukkah? So what about Shari uh, evidence? You know, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has sent Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for four basic, four missions. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالِ مُبِينٍ That you were in darkness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you light through three things. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would recite, would teach the recitation of the Qur'an to bring the light of guidance. And then وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ Purify your heart and then teach you the ilam of the Qur'an and teach you the ilam of the hadith. So ilam of the recitation of Qur'an and the ilam of the Qur'an and the hadith and the purification of the car of your heart. These are the four objectives of Prophet ﷺ. All of these objectives of Prophet ﷺ were taken care of, were executed from inside of the masjid. Prophet ﷺ had masjid, his masjid al-Nabawi. In masjid al-Nabawi al-Sharif there is Ashab al-Sufa who are the salikeen of this khanqa of Rasulullah sallallahu They are getting this light through the tilawat of Qur'an, through the purification of heart, through the ilm Qur'an from ilm hadith. And then when the Islam is developing more, because uh, in the later times when Islam is spreading and growing, there is details involved. Then the ulama who are teaching the Qur'an, they started making an institution of their own and they call it a madrasa. In madrasa, they have a syllabus which is for 8 years, 10 years, 20 years, whatever that syllabus is, to give you that ilam that Prophet ﷺ was giving to the sahaba inside of the Masjid al-Nabawi. Now that is being catered out in a different institution. This institution is called madrasa. It's not separate from the masjid. This works hand in hand with the masjid. In the same way, the objective of Prophet ﷺ talks about the purification of heart. That, that Sufi institution, that Sufi institution is Khanqa, where people would come, exercise different a'mal, and they would exercise different ibadat to bring that goodness that needs to be done to purify their hearts. Ibrahim ibn Adam, rahimahumullah ta'ala, he used to spend his time inside of the masajid. And then later on, the later Sufi Ikram, they would not come out of the house. They would spend most of their time inside of the, their own house because they are doing these exercises of the heart. But later on, then the benefit was only confined to that person. So later on, then uh, they said that we should have an institution, we should have a building, we should have a place where people can come and they can have the same purpose. And with everybody doing the same, it would be a more benefit. So that is the presence of Khanqa. That is how Khanqa was established. And what is this Khanqa? Khanqa is a place where Allah is remembered for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just in the past khutbah of Hazaji, he mentioned that Iblis, he made the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every place, in the heavens and the earth. There was not a single spot that he left without praying Allah, without worshipping Allah. And then, he, why did he turn into Iblis? His worship was not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He worshipped Allah, but he was, he was in a delusion that he was doing it for Allah, but he was not. He was doing because he wanted the khilafah. He wanted to be the representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that when Allah decided to give that to Adam alayhi salam, he made taqabbu to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it was a, such a, a blessing that Azaji said that he stood in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a hundred years. Angels are doing sajda to Adam alayhi salam for 100 years and that 100 years he is arguing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why should I do this? Khalaqtani min nari wa khalaqtahu min teen You have created me out of fire and him with the sand soil how can I do this? How can I make sajda to Adam who is lower than me? So this is what happened. So he was doing the dhikr of Allah not for Allah but in khanqa under the guidance of the Shaykh. That's why you need the guidance of the Shaykh, because he, he, he would find out, why are you doing this? A lot of times you see, you say, my brother, my friend, my colleague, he was such a pious man, he was the president of MSA, he was doing the, he was doing the uh, what do you call, the Juma Salah, the Eid Salah, he was organizing so much, and today he's an atheist. Why? Why? What did he do? Why he was not getting accepted in the eyes of Allah? Why? Because maybe all that he was doing was for something else. Who needs to figure that out? He needs to come to the Khanqa, get himself diagnosed. Why are you doing this? 
Are you doing it for some other purpose? That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Kahf, that they do it. Allah says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Stay in the company of those people who remember their Rabb in the morning and the nights. Yuriduna wajhahu. They want, they're seeking your pleasure. Doing the dhikr of Allah for the sake of Allah and nothing else. This is the, uh, you cannot just sit down at home and do the dhikr of Allah and be so happy. MashaAllah, I did this. We have seen real-time examples. People have done it for years and then changed. Why would they change? Right? So, that is the purpose. Correction of the niya, purification of the heart is that important. Even if you are doing the dhikr of Allah, you still need to check, a constant check on your heart. Why are you doing it? Right? So, Rasul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, these are the places, these khanqas are the places where the light of guidance is distributed. Allah says that these, the lights are found where? In the masajid and in the khanqas where Allah's name is mentioned in the days and in the night. So this is the importance of the khanqa. But just like we have forgotten the virtues of our inside, the virtues of the heart, the virtues of the character, we have forgotten the virtues of the khanqa and the importance. And today someone has to stand up and prove the presence of khanqa. There was, in early times, in our Asian Islam, Muslims, this was not something that needs to be proven. These were funded by governments. These were funded by people because they knew these are necessary institutions in our society. But today we have forgotten our inner self, so we, today we know how to please our eyes. Because we can see something beautiful, it's going to please our eyes. We know how to please our hands, we know how to please our ears, we have good music. But what about pleasing your heart? Who's going to please your heart? Who, what is more important, your eyes or the heart? When your heart dies, you're dead. When your hand stops working, then it's not such a big loss as it is when your heart dies. We have, today we have, we know how to keep our heart, hands working in a good form, our legs and everything working and our, all our senses working. But what about our heart? This heart is not going to be pleased by any other objects of this world. This is going to be pleased. As Mawlana Tassin said, Allah bi dhikri Allahi tatmain al qulub So there, that is where the importance of Hanka comes. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam repeatedly he mentioned, you know, when you come in the dhikr, Allah subhanahu he one time he was sitting with the sahaba and he said, on the day of Qiyamah, there would be people who would be, they would be stationed on the pulpits of Noor. Or pulpits of Noor. And they would not be, uh, they would not be uh, Malaika, they would not be the prophets. And then the Sahaba said, then who would they be? And the Rasulullah said, they would be the people who belong to different tribes and different nationalities. They come together to dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will put them together like this. And Allah, uh, Shaykh Zakaria Kandilvi rahimahumullah ta'ala has mentioned this hadith. And then he says, فَسَوْفَ تَرَى إِذَنْ كَشَفَ الْغُبَار That uh, you would see, فَسَوْفَ تَرَى Very soon you would see, إِذَنْ كَشَفَ الْغُبَار When this dust is going to settle, أَفَّرَسٌ تَحْتَ رِجْلِكَ أَوْ حِمَار That uh, where you, if you were sitting on a horseback or you were uh, on, a, on a back of a donkey. That day you will realize. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding and make us utilize the Hanka under the Sheikh of uh, our Sheikh, uh, Hazrat Dr. Mufti Munir Ahmad Akhun Damad Barkatumul Aliyah.